Welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Tuesday, August 18th, 2009. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain. Many of the stories read here can also be found at our website at IndianCountryNews.com. Here are the news stories for the day off the wires and other Native American news sources. A former music teacher at an Onondaga Reservation school has been sentenced to six months in prison for molesting a seven-year-old girl in his class. Albert Skirbo of Clay, uh, New York, also received a ten, 10 years uh, of probation. Before being sentenced in Syracuse, Skirbo told the judge he is innocent and complained he's been the victim of racial and religious prejudice. The 47-year-old teacher was convicted in June of one felony count of first-degree sexual abuse and a misdemeanor charge of endangering the welfare of a child. The Onondaga County Court judge who presided over his non-jury trial found him guilty of molesting the girl in August of 2007 at the Onondaga Nation School just south of Syracuse, New York. Skirbel is expected to appeal the sentence. To Johnny Enoch, a Tlaloc tribal member, technology was a way to share American Indian culture. A longtime member of the Tlaloc Youth Multimedia Club, Enoch's natural journalism talent landed him on an American Indian focused radio program based in Laconner, Washington. It was his chance to use high tech equipment to highlight, among other things, ancient traditions. Enoch, 23, passed away recently. He was last seen on August 9th at the Stalagamish River. Divers from the Snohomish County Sheriff's Office found his body in the water last Tuesday morning. Sheriff spokesman Rebecca Hoover said there was no sign of foul play. Enoch joined the Talala Boys and Girls Club as a preteen. He was active in the club for years, then joined the staff as an adult. He left that job less than a year ago, but had planned to return soon. The other major factor that drew Enoch to the Boys and Girls Club was the multimedia organization and opportunity there. Robin Carneen, who led the Talalup Youth Multimedia Club, offered Enoch and other club members the chance to air their radio reports on her radio show, First People's Radio in Laconner. Enoch always was the first in line to hop in a vehicle and travel to a nearby powwow or a musical show to conduct interviews, Carneen had said. Acting Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary of Indian Affairs George Skabeen on August 16th issued a proposed finding not to acknowledge the petitioner known as the Brothertown Indian Nation as an Indian tribe. The petitioner, located in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, has 3,137 members. The evidence in the record demonstrates that the petitioner does not meet five of the seven mandatory criteria for federal acknowledgement as set forth in the Code of Federal Regulations. In accordance with the regulations, uh, section 83.6c, the failure to meet all seven criteria requires a determination that the petitioning group is not an Indian tribe within the meaning of federal law. Therefore, the Department, of, uh, Department proposes to decline acknowledgement of the Brothertown petitioners at this time. Copies of the proposed finding and Federal Register notice will be posted on the Department of Interior's website at doi.gov. Eight tribes in Michigan will divide more than $14 million in federal stimulus money to improve housing on their reservations and in their communities. Grants of $2 million each are headed to the Bay Mills Indian Community in Brimley, Michigan, the Grand Traverse Band of Ottawa and Chippewa Indians in Sutton's Bay, the Little River Band of Ottawa Indians in Manistee, the Little Traverse Bay Bands of Odawa in Harbor Springs, the Machabinashiwish Band of Potawatomi Indians in Dor and the Pokagon Band of Potawatomi Indians in Dawagiak. The Lakview Desert Band of Lake Superior Chippewa and Watersmeet were awarded nearly $1.4 million. The Nataway Sipi Huron Band of Potawatomi and Fulton was awarded $1 million. In another area of the United States that got some stimulus funding for housing, six New Mexico Pueblos will share in more than $11 million in grant funding to improve housing as well. The funds from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development were announced early, uh, late last week. U.S. Senator Jeff Bingham, Bingham, Bing, Binghamman uh, of New Mexico said the funding, a result of the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, will be a major investment in Indian country. He said it will help ensure affordable quality housing for more Pueblo members. 
Zuni Pueblo and the Mescalero Apache Nation will each receive $3 million, and Isleta and OK Awinge will receive $2 million each. Laguna and Taos will also receive funding under that stimulus housing program. The second biennial Ojibwe Arts and Cultural Festival, sponsored by the Cable Namakagan Wisconsin Historical Museum, was well attended on Saturday, August 2nd by visitors and area residents. The event was supported by the Lacoudre Arts and Cultural Association. Over 25 exhibitors participated in the festival. As a part of the educational experience, the public was invited to participate in balloting for the Citizens' Choice Awards. This year's festival award winners included Scott Hill for Morse Creative, Kurt Raffalo for the Best Contemporary Artwork, Nancy Cooper for the Most Educational Piece of Artwork, and Dick Mindikowski for the Best Traditional Piece of Artwork. Officials in Montana plan to transplant uh, plan to transplant about 30 swift foxes to the Fort Peck Reservation in an effort to boost fox numbers by linking populations of the small predator in Canada, South Dakota, and Wyoming. The foxes will be captured from areas near Whitewater and Chinook in north central Montana and moved to the reservation in eastern Montana uh, during September. Leonard Bighorn, a wildlife technician for the Assiniboine and Sioux tribes, says ultimately the goal is to establish a corridor from Canada to Texas. Swift foxes only weigh about 5 pounds but can run up to 25 miles per hour. The foxes are native to the Great Plains, but Montana officials estimate only about 500 remain in the state of Montana. And that is the latest edition of the Native News Update. We want to thank our underwriters for helping us with this broadcast and you for joining with us again here in the studios of IndianCountryTV.com. Miigwech for coming here.